All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to go through the elk opportunity state in the West, and that is Colorado. So if you're an elk hunter, there is no doubt Colorado has at least been uh, top of mind uh, at a time at some point in your life because Colorado has more elk than any other Western state. And they also issue more elk licenses than any other Western state. So today we're going to talk about application strategy for the limited uh, entry elk applications in the state of Colorado. And we're also going to talk a little bit about backup plans and over-the-counter opportunities in Colorado. I will actually go through the application process on the state of Colorado's website and show you how to navigate that and talk about a couple really important changes that are taking place in Colorado this year. But before we jump into that, as we always do in these application videos, I'm going to start with Go Hunt Insider. And again, just a plug for that tool as a research tool. If you're not a member of Go Hunt Insider, strongly suggest it strictly because of the power it provides as you start looking at each of these different elk hunting states. And we're going to use, again, we're going to look at draw odds, we're going to look at filtering 2.0. They also have the application strategy articles, which talk about more things than you will ever want to learn about for each of these Western elk hunting states. So I'm just going to jump in uh, into Go Hunt, into Insider, and remind you that if you're not a member, you can be. Just go to gohunt.com forward slash elk101 and get signed up and Go Hunt will send you a $50 gift card to the Elk 101 store. Uh, but that's not the important part of Go Hunt. The important part of Go Hunt is the application information that they provide. So if we just jump in and look at Colorado, it's going to bring us to filtering 2.0. And then I also have pulled up uh, over here, just the draw odds. So I'm gonna click on Colorado and I'm going to click non-resident and elk. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Colorado is the land of opportunity. You can buy over-the-counter tags in, I believe it's 96 units that are available to hunt over-the-counter. Uh, but there are also several limited entry elk hunts that you can also apply for. And all of the first season and fourth season rifle hunts are limited entry. There are several muzzleloader as well as archery hunts that are also limited entry. So knowing the difference, you can apply for them. You don't have to apply in Colorado to be able to hunt. You can hunt second and third season rifle. You can hunt a lot of the archery units just over the counter. So we'll start off talking about limited entry and then we'll spend some time talking about over the counter as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind this year is Colorado has changed their application process. The deadline is April 2nd at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you miss that deadline, you can't apply for a limited entry tag. Uh, the other thing in the past, Colorado has had you pay for the tag fee up front. Uh, there are also some other fees that they charge you. If you want a preference point through the application process, they also charge you, I believe it was $40 for that. In 2019, that has all changed. You now have to buy a qualifying license, which is the least expensive option is the small game license. For a non-resident, that's $81.75. It's non-refundable. In addition to that, you have to buy a $10 habitat stamp. Uh, the application fee of $9, I believe there's a couple other small fees on there. So you're investing about a hundred, a little over $100 to apply and receive a preference point in the state of Colorado now going forward. So keep that in mind. Uh, Colorado used to be the least expensive option. It still is probably pretty close, but it's more expensive by uh, probably a little more than double from what it was last year. So as we just look at draw odds, I want to point out a couple things. I'm going to leave all weapons open here. So we've got archery, we've got muzzleloader, and then we've got early rifle, second rifle, uh, I believe that was third, yep, third rifle, and then fourth rifle as options right now. So a lot of units, a lot of options in the state of Colorado. Uh, if we look at draw odds, and we want to say... Uh, we are first choice 
and let's say we have two points and we want to be guaranteed to draw a tag with two points. If we're not concerned about a weapon or a season, I just want to scroll through here and show you what your opportunities are. So with archery, uh, multiple units, probably uh, just guessing 20 units there. Muzzleloader's got probably a lot, <laughs> probably 40 units. Uh, first rifle, you've got a multitude of units there, probably 50 or more. Second rifle, quite a few. Third rifle, quite a few. Fourth rifle, even more. So with two points in the state of Colorado, you have a lot of opportunity. Now, if we want to get specific by season, I'm just going to pick archery and take a look at those units. Now, this is two points with 100% guarantee. If you look down here, most of these units, or a lot of them anyway, are still 100% guaranteed with one point and several of them with zero points. So let's look at zero points. In the state of Colorado, you've got seven archery hunts that are guaranteed in the controlled side. When we get over to filtering 2.0, we can look at over-the-counter tags as well. But I want to point out, these are tags that you can't just buy over-the-counter. So they're limited in some way. Uh, the number of, of licenses that they issue for these units is limited, but you're still guaranteed. You have to apply for them in the draw, but you're guaranteed to draw them with zero points. Colorado uses a preference point system, so those with the most points draw the tags first. So in a, in a very limited area, so for instance, I'll say I have 15 points, which is actually what I do have in Colorado. Uh, if I have 15 points, I have a lot more options for archery hunts that I can draw. And just looking here, there are probably, uh, what's that, close to 20 units that I can draw controlled limited hunts uh, with 15 points. But if I slide this down to zero points, it's going to show all of those units, and there are a lot more. So let's take a look at unit 10, which is up in the northwest corner, a very popular unit. Unit 10 takes 25 points to be guaranteed to draw. And with 24 points, you'll see it has a 13% draw odd. Anything below that is zero. That's how a preference point system works. Those with the most points draw the tags. Those who have fewer points don't draw the tags. So if there are 10 tags available for non-residents in a unit and there are five people that apply with the most points, those five are guaranteed. If there are 10 people at the next lower point level that apply, there are only five tags left, so you have a five out of 10 chance or a 50% chance of drawing with that next point level. All 10 of the tags at that point will have been issued and no one underneath that point level will draw a tag. So I've illustrated uh, the, the multitude of limited tags that are available for both or for all archery, muzzleloader, and rifle hunts in the state of Colorado with as few as two points. And it really opens up that opportunity. What it's going to do is get you into some hunts that have a limited number of other hunters. So it's going to help with hunting pressure uh, compared to what the over-the-counter type hunts are going to be. So I want to jump in and take a look at Insider. And again, when you come to Insider, you'll notice these states are highlighted because we've selected uh, the Western states. And I want to look at Colorado specifically. So it's going to bring up the state of Colorado. We're going to select elk. And when we select elk, it's going to show all of the elk units in the state of Colorado. And you'll notice there are a bunch of them. So as we start filtering down, and if you've watched any of the previous videos that I've done using Go Hunt Insider, uh, it's really awesome because I can filter through trophy potential, draw odds, uh, season type, uh, percentage of public land, success rates, all of those things, and really find the units that match up with the criteria I have for what I want in that hunt this fall. All right, so as we start filtering through here, I'm just going to move the trophy quality to 300 plus. And you'll see most of the eastern side disappears. A few of the, the western slope units disappear. And as we go into draw odds, we're going to select our residency as a non-resident. 
we're going to look at first choice. And I'm going to start out with, uh, let's just say five points. Now, if I don't change the draw odds, nothing's going to change because I have a 0% or greater chance of drawing these units with five points. But if I want a 100% chance of drawing with five points, you'll notice a handful of the units disappear. We're still showing every weapon type. So now if I go to Archery Limited, a whole bunch more of the units disappear. You know, when we talk about these, these draw hunts and limited entry hunts in the different states, a lot of times we get hung up talking about trophy units. And in a state like Arizona or uh, Nevada or Utah, two or three points isn't going to get you much. In fact, it's not going to get you hardly anything. But in a state like Colorado, just having two points, sometimes it's worth looking at uh, applying for or at least building points in Colorado for two or three years and drawing a limited hunt. And it's going to be more quality than most of the over-the-counter hunts most of the time. And of course, you're going to need to do your research on that. But if we look at two points, I want 100% draw odds. And I'm going to look at archery, muzzleloader, and early rifle opportunities in the state of Colorado. You'll notice there are 20 or 25 units that have opportunities that meet that criteria that I'm guaranteed to draw with two points. And some of them, you know, unit five, first rifle, guaranteed to draw. Uh, unit 18, first rifle, guaranteed to draw. Bull to cow ratio of 37 to 100, 88% public land. Again, so these are going to provide you with an opportunity that might be a little bit higher quality than what you're going to find just simply with an over-the-counter tag. Uh, so don't, don't write off the, the opportunity to apply for a limited entry hunt or to build points in Colorado uh, looking at the quality hunts. Because when we get into looking at units like 2, uh, 201, 1, all the units up in the northwest corner, unit 61, unit 76, some of these harder to draw quality units where you're going to be hunting more trophy caliber bulls, it's going to do you no good to enter the points game in Colorado at this point. Uh, we'll just take a look here. I believe unit 61, which is a, a well-known unit in Colorado for trophy potential. Uh, we're going to see trophy potential of 350 plus, unit 61, a lot of public land, and I've got 15 points as a non-resident, and I have zero chance of drawing it. In fact, I don't have a chance of drawing unit 61 until I have 22 points. So that's seven years away. Unfortunately, in seven years, it's probably going to take 28 or 29 points to draw unit 61. That's called point creep. So every year, it gains a point on what it takes to draw that hunt. And me with 15 points, I will probably never draw that hunt. If we look at last year, this unit gives 14 non-resident archery tags per season. And last year, there were 313 people who applied for that. Now, I don't have the breakdown. We can get the breakdown here on Go Hunt of how many people are at each point level. But you can see, say there were five people at max points and 10 people below that and 20 people below that. You can really easily calculate how many tags are going to be issued to which point level each year based on who applied last year. Now keep in mind, I have 15 points. I have never applied in Colorado. So each year I just buy a point. So I don't even show up in the statistics for the number of applicants for this specific, specific hunt. What that means is that 313 number, the number of applicants that applied last year as non-residents is likely going to be considerably more than that because each year, the people who have 22 points now, they're going to be people who jump in with 23, 24 points and burn their points in that unit this year. What I'm trying to say is, it's going to take a minimum of 20 years to burn through the number of applicants that applied last year for this unit at 14 tags per season. So doing the math, it makes no sense to get in Colorado in the draws and start building points right now if your hope is to hunt unit 61, unit 76, unit 2, unit 201, unit 1 up in the northwest corner. Any of these units that are taking 10 or more points to draw right now, 
you realistically aren't going to have a point or a chance of, of drawing if you start building points, strictly because Colorado uses the preference point system. So with that being said, there are still many opportunities and many advantages to building points for some of the units that take fewer points to draw. And as we looked here, I'm just gonna enter in two points and non-resident, I wanna be guaranteed to draw with two points. I'm okay with archery muzzleloader or early rifle. I want 35% public land, 25% success rates. You'll notice I've got probably 20 units to choose from. And these units have good bull to cow ratios, 30 to 100 success rates of 28% uh, guaranteed to draw. Muzzleloader tags, archery tags. Uh, let's see if there's an early rifle here just to make sure before I say that. It doesn't look like there is an early rifle hunt. Uh, public land at 35%. If we go down on that and want to lower our success rates, several more units start popping up. So Colorado is, is great especially for these units that are they're limited, but they're still easy to draw. Now, if we get rid of points and we just go into, we want over the counter. So we're looking at archery, second rifle, or third rifle. Those are our opportunities with over the counter tags. And we want a guaranteed, obviously they're over the counter, so they're guaranteed. We want good public land. So I'm gonna put 50% public land and harvest success rates 20% or higher, not shown. If we drop harvest success down to zero, public land down to zero, our number of units that we can hunt, there are a lot of them. These are the over-counter units. <clears throat> now, the cool thing about Go Hunt Insider is it's powerful even for over-the-counter hunters. So if we look at this and we want to change the trophy potential, we say we want a unit that's got some good bulls in it. These units have trophy potential of 300 plus. Let's dial this all the way up to 370. You'll notice 851 down here has trophy potential of 370. It's over the counter, uh, but we're going to come back down to, let's say, 340. And nothing else pops up. So we're going to go to 320 and a couple units pop up. So we can see there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units that have good trophy potential that are over the counter. From there, we can filter public land and get public land up to 50%. And a couple of them go away. Harvest percentage, let's get it up to 20%. And we're left with just a couple. So now we can say, all right, there's two units that offer over the counter. One's a second rifle, one's a third rifle, bull to cow ratio of 38 to 100, trophy potential 320 inches. So this unit 60 catches my attention because it's over the counter for a rifle hunt. It has good uh, success rates. It is, I was just looking here for my second rifle hunt over the counter that I can get. Uh, harvest success rate of 22 to 36% over the last four years. And it's over the counter. So filtering 2.0 doesn't just provide draw odds and success rates for limited hunts. It's also powerful for over the counter opportunities. Uh, we can again, change our filters here and look at public land harvest success rates, as well as trophy potential. We bring this down to 280 inches and we get a lot more units popping up. From there, we can look at bull to cow ratios, success rates, all of that. What I wanna look at really quickly is if you have 15 points and you wanna be guaranteed to draw and we are looking at archery only. We're gonna get rid of the over the counter stuff and look at archery. Guaranteed to draw 15 points as a non-resident, 50% public land. I'm gonna bump the harvest success rate up to 25%. And I'm able to start looking at, looks like seven units, six units that I can research for myself with my 15 points. This year, we've got a pretty busy schedule with Destination Elk, so I'm not going to apply for Colorado. I'm going to purchase a point and I can walk you through that process really quickly. 
If you just go to the Colorado uh, Game and Fish website, click on buy or apply online. The reason I want to do this is because there's one very important factor that has changed this year. So I am going to sign in. So I log into my account. If you don't have an account, it's real easy to create one. And from here, I can go in, I can look at my preference points, I can get all my information, but what I want to go to is licensing. So if we just click on buy, apply online, and then click on view available licenses and draws, it's going to bring up a note here that says you have to have that qualifying license in order to apply. You can purchase the qualifying license at the time you apply, but if you try to apply for a hunting license or for a big game license, so for the elk, if I go down here and click on elk, it's going to say there are no applications or hunts available for elk at this time. That is because I don't have my qualifying license. So you need to go up before you try to apply for elk, go into hunting, and then come down here. This is the non-resident small game annual license for 2018. Do not click on this one. This is $56. It expires the end of March 2019. You want to come down and make sure you get the resident small game annual license for 2019. It's $81.75. So you click on purchase that first. It gives you a note and tells you what it is. You'll also be required at that time to buy your habitat stamp for $10. So all of this is here. We add it to the cart. But before we add it to the cart, we have to provide our hunter education number. And so mine I've got pulled up. I'll copy that. Add that in here. United States. I'm in Idaho is where I took hunter's education. Now I can add that to the cart. So I have my hunting license and habitat stamp in the cart. Now I can go up and apply for my elk license. Apply now. I'm not in a hunting group. And I can go in here and apply for an elk license if I want to, or I can do preference points. And the preference point code is just P and then a bunch of nines and then P. And if I am unsuccessful in this drawing, I want them to do nothing. If you're applying for a hunt, you can choose to receive an over-the-counter either sex archery license, an over-the-counter bull third season rifle, second season rifle, over-the-counter antlerless cow, or if there are any leftovers in the draws, you can choose to receive that if you don't draw the choice of hunt that you applied for. I am applying for a point only, so I want to receive nothing. I'll confirm my choice. And add that to the cart. So I've now added my hunting license, the qualifying license, which is a small game license, application, everything. Go to the cart and you'll notice it adds a $9 application fee and it also adds a few other fees. So total, I'm at $100.75 to apply for a point only in Colorado. That's expensive. But if you don't apply for a limited entry hunt, you can just show up before season, buy your license, over-the-counter license in Colorado, or you can order it online uh, leading up to the start of the season. If you show up in Colorado after the season has started, you have to go to a Colorado Fish and Wildlife office to purchase your elk license. Before that, you can do it online. So in a nutshell, Colorado is the land of opportunity for elk hunters. There are opportunities for limited entry hunts that do not take a lot of points to draw. Colorado is not a great state to get into if you're wanting to hunt one of the trophy units because there's so many people ahead of you, you will never draw those tags in your lifetime. The great part about Colorado is you can show up, buy an over-the-counter license for second season or third season rifle or archery and go hunting. You also have a lot of opportunities for hunts with zero, one, two, three, or four points for both rifle, muzzleloader, and archery. So be sure and uh, check out Go Hunt Insider. Lots of information. Colorado is probably the best state to really showcase the power of Go Hunt Insider. Just go to Go Hunt Insider forward slash elk 101 to get signed up. 
And also be sure and check out the University of Elk Hunting online course at Elk 101 because there's a lot of information pertaining to Colorado. Obtaining the tag is part of it, but there's a whole lot more once you obtain that tag to help you be successful on that hunt. And that's the purpose of the online course at Elk 101. So check that out. The deadline to apply in Colorado is April 2nd at 8 p.m. And if you do apply, good luck. If you don't apply and you buy an over-the-counter tag, best of luck on your hunts this fall.